So pain and sleep go hand in hand and they are, anyone who's had pain will know that they don't sleep and you need to sleep to heal. And the problem is in the middle, at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night, you're lying there and your, is it your amygdala takes over and that little part of your brain has got no self-control and it just takes you on this flight of fancy where you cannot control the anxiety and the desperation and the fear that this pain will never end and is totally controlling you. When my pain was is at, at its worst, I can't sleep on my right side and I've always, every time I go to the doctors, I'll prove them by my hair. So the way I lay down, the flat, so my left side would be flat and my right side would have woof still. Where I went, I had to actually take my own pillow. I found one pillow that was reasonable <laughs> and I tried, like I had about eight or nine different pillows, all different sorts, all different materials and I found one that, so if I, I went um, and travelled, I'd take this pillow with me. Um, and if I happened in the middle of the night to turn on one side, then I'd wake up the next morning. I just couldn't move my neck. And um, so that as well gradually got better and now I sort of sleep on both sides with no issues and you know, I don't take my pillow <laughs> with me now. Um, I can pretty much sleep on any, any pillow without any issues. And if I do do something and my neck becomes stiff, I know to relax it. I know not to get upset. Um, I just try and relax, meditate, do the exercises I've been given and it loosens off very quickly. Within sort of half an hour, an hour, I can feel a big difference. Um, from pretty early on, I started on um, quite a lot of drugs like Trammel. Um, I was taking Valium to sleep because, I, yeah, I couldn't, wasn't sleeping well. I mean, I was laying down all day and then when it comes to night time, you know, what do you do? You stay up and watch TV and then, then you can't sleep. So having Lyrica, Trammel, sometimes Valium and Meloxicam and anti-inflammatory. I don't think they were helpful at all. Uh, after my discectomy, I went back to work and I was still on all the drugs. It's, I didn't realise, I probably shouldn't have been driving when I was on those. But anyway, I'd get to work. And I remember I, I went to grab something near the computer and got this like a stabbing pain. And I just said, you know what, I'm, I can't be here. I went, so this is after the discectomy. So I, I drove home and I said, I'm not taking, no, sorry, I doubled up on all my medication. I thought, if you know, I, I want this pain to go away. Doubled up on everything and all it did was make me turn a yellow colour for the next two days and I felt it didn't, didn't get rid of the pain. So after that, I, I stopped, stopped taking them, just stopped them altogether and then I had some trouble sleeping as well. When we had people who, in pain, who were trying to get a better quality of sleep, sometimes you actually had to, again, ask them to stand back and look at how their behavior is helping or hindering them. I generally advise people to have, to practice what's called sleep hygiene. And this can be, there are many, many, many websites that will help you, many books that will help you with sleep hygiene. But the principles are all the same. Go to bed at the same time, get up at the same time. The body likes regularity. We walk regularly, our heart beats regularly, we breathe regularly. Hopefully our bowels are open regularly. And if they are, we are a happier person. Same is true for sleep. It's bedtime, same time every day. Get up, hopefully at the same time every day. Don't nap during the day to try and catch up with sleep. Don't stay in bed if you have woken up and have had enough sleep. Don't just lie there in bed and fret to get up and do something. Maybe do an extra walk. Sleep's like our reset button. So if we're not getting good sleep, our system doesn't recover well. And again, I know even if I'm not in pain in my sleep's no good, my mood tends to be affected. So those things tend to interact together and it's really important that we're considering all of those components. So for me, when I learnt about the amygdala, it was a very important day for me because I was horrified that it was one part of my brain that was keeping me awake at night and, and making me have panic attacks, anxiety attacks and 
I had to acknowledge it for what it was. I'd wake up at 3 a.m., I'd be sore, and I now, and, and stressed and worried, and I would go, this is not me, this is my amygdala, running rampant, rampant. Um, enough now, it can be quiet, and I just hop up and I have a little walk, get some movement going, realise everything's fine, and I can climb back into bed and go to sleep. I think when you're lying there frozen in your bed, scared to move, because you know if you move, and that's where physio is so important because I told him that and it was really hard for me to tell him that because it sounds so stupid that I would wake up in the night and be afraid to move because I knew it would be too sore. And he said to me, move with your head first. So it was roll with my neck and then your body follows. How could I get to 46 and not know that? <laughs> but I didn't. So it's little tools like that you get from someone who has seen it all, done it all and can really help you.